Good morning, everyone. It is very nice to see you again in this class in this uh, spring morning. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to move on to next subject that is called near end cross toe and far end cross toe. You remember that up to the last class, I was talking about transmission line theory and differential signaling theory. In addition to that, uh, I was talking about common mode generation intentionally or unintentionally. I told you that common mode could be a, a serious source of electromagnetic interferences and crosstalk. At the end of the last class, I was talking about the reduction methods to minimize the common mode generations. Now I would like to move on to the next subject. Any XT represent for near and cross power and find FEXT are representing for far and cross talk. When you have a chance to design interconnections in a level in level such as chip level interconnection, uh, package level interconnections, PCB level interconnections, and cable level interconnections, you will meet many situations where there are strong serious specification related to near end crosstalk and far end crosstalk. So it is good to know about the basic theories and principles related to near end crosstalk and find crosstalk. Let's assume you have lines adjacent to each other. Uh, each line may carry single end signaling. If you are injecting a digital signaling from low to high level, and crosstalk will be generated at the adjacent line. And the point near the source is called near end cross top. And if you are observing the uh, noise pulses generated and observed at the receiving side at the adjacent line, then the voltage waveform is going to be called as far end cross top. So this kind of noise will uh, be added to the original distal waveform of adjacent line. So by adding these two waveforms, you're gonna have some noises. And of course, this kind of noise will reduce voltage and timing margin at the receiver side. Because the data rate of transmission line is increasing very fastly, uh, sooner or later, we're gonna uh, be uh, in a situation that we have to um, send more than 100 gigabps per line or per second. And in addition, many of these lines will be spaced in a dense space. So we're gonna see many uh, of these uh, situations. Because we wanna reduce the power consumption. So we, want, we have smaller voltage margin. And because the data rate is steadily increasing, we're gonna have smaller and smaller timing margin. So this kind of crosstalk is very serious problem when you are designing the interconnection. So today I, I'm going to talk about the basic principles and design uh, directions related to near end crosstalk and far end crosstalk. Uh, this is a summary, summary to talk about why we have crosstalk problems. Uh, for example, uh, in HBM module uh, between GPU and DRAM, we have more than 24 IOs. IO number is 1024. And I really believe that in the future, we're going to have more than 10 to 6 interconnection between GPU and DRAM. 
At the same time, data rate will be increased significantly then that means rising time and falling time of signal will become shorter and shorter in a range of picosecond or in the future could be uh, 100 femtosecond or low. In addition to that, we have another trend saying that space between the line is getting smaller and smaller because we have usually the size of GPU may be uh, one centimeter by one centimeter size or three centimeter by three centimeter size. And DRAM has the HBM has even smaller uh, die size. So in order to put um, billions of interconnections or thousand interconnections in this very uh, limited edge space, the spacing between the lines will become smaller and smaller. So it's going to be very challenging to control the crosstalk. So that means crosstalk is going to be a big challenge to um, So that is uh, uh, one thing. Uh, in the PCB, uh, when we are sending uh, very high speed signals, because number of interconnection is very limited, we are uh, applying many of serial uh, connection. In order to achieve the serial connection over 100 gigabps, we are usually using the differential signaling. So uh, in PCB, on a surface, we may have differential pair one, differential pair two, differential pair three, differential pair four. So it's gonna be hundred or thousand. So in this situation, again, we have some problem uh, to have a uh, crosstalk between the differential pairs. If we are sending some high speed signal on a line, it will affect line two and line one because the distance between line one and line two are different. We, we're gonna generate the common mode common mode crosstalk between the differential pairs. Uh, this is uh, another situation where we are gonna have more crosstalk problems in the future. Again, in the packaging level, we're gonna have some wires very close to each other. So between the wire, we're gonna have a uh, crosstalk. Because in this wire bonding of package, we do not, the ground plane is somewhere far away. H is really high. So usually to reduce the uh, crosstalk ground helps, but in this kind of wire bonding package, uh, the height of wiring is quite high. Ground plane is far away. So it's a very uh, uh, serious situation to cause the crosstalk problem. Another situation is cabling. Cabling is, in, is between the server and server or in the automotive bakers, you may have some PCB1 is placed at the front side of your car and probably PCB2 may be placed at the rear side of car. You have to connect them using the cables because you cannot use PCB or package to make a single uh, interconnection system. So usually to uh, have um, flexibilities and uh, manufacturabilities, we usually use the cables. In the case of cable, we have differential pair one and differential pair two. Um, then again, uh, we're gonna have uh, crosstalk between the differential pairs. Uh, these are the summary of uh, interconnection crosstalk problems at the chip level, package level, and PCB level, as well as system level. Um, in order to reduce the crosstalk, one obvious method to realize that crosstalk minimization is increasing the space. If you increase the space, mutual capacitance and mutual inductance between the lines 
can be reduced. Capacitance, mutual capacitance is generated by electric field infringement between a line and between line two. A magnetic uh, in mutual inductance is generated when uh, there is magnetic coupling between line and line two. So if we increase the space between the lines, mutual capacitance and mutual inductance will be decreased. That is the basic principles of electromagnetics, which usually were covered in uh, fundamentals of electromagnetics and circuit theory. Also, if we have more space, space is uh, increased. Even mode and odd mode impedance is becoming very close to each other. Uh, there is another situation where we can deduce the cross talk. We later in this class, we will talk about the over mode impedance and even mode impedance more closely to related to cross talk reduction method. Anyway, spacing is very good way to number one, a principle to reduce the cross talk. However, if we have more space, we're going to increase the area of interconnection. Especially, especially in mobile uh, system, we want to make a smaller with a smaller uh, weight. So area, every uh, uh, system designer wants to make a small area. So it is a contradiction between area increase and crosstalk reduction. So also, as I mentioned before, IO number is heavily increasing. So this uh, space increase is really colliding with these two principles. Another approach to reduce the crosstalk is uh, in increasing the rising time. Let's assume in a case one, we might have rising time of picosecond, and in case two, we may have rising time of nanosecond. It is thousand times smaller. Of course, uh, crosstalk is a function of frequencies. If you have a higher frequencies, crosstalk will be increased because mutual capacitance and mutual inductance and voltage will be a function of frequency multiplied by um, capacitance and inductance. So if we reduce the rising time, frequency component will be reduced and crosstalk will be reduced. So it, this is one possible way to control the rising time of your IO drivers. But this is also colliding with uh, another system requirement saying, we want to have data rate increase. If you want to uh, increase the data rate increase, then of course you have to reduce the rising and falling time to guarantee certain timing margins at the receiver side. So slower uh, rising time system has less EMI and crosstalk problems, but this is not easily achieved. Third um, principle that we can uh, apply to reduce the crosstalk is putting the shield ground lines between uh, two lines. Obviously, this is a good approach and by putting this uh, space line, we can reduce the uh, mutual capacitance and mutual inductance. I think this is the best way to minimize the crosstalk. But again, we have the number of interconnection will be become twice because for each line, we have to put the ground line between them. So this is also very co high cost solution. And of course, the one of the one of the obvious uh, uh, solution to minimize extremely minimize the crosstalk is putting the uh, ground line between the two lines. And uh, in addition to that, you can put the ground ground plane underneath, and then we can reduce the uh, mutual capacitance and mutual inductance. In summary, I would say to reduce the crosstalk. Um, we can apply this number one, number two, number three, and number four methods, but it will increase the cost and it will increase the area and it will increase the number of layers and it will increase the number of uh, interconnection. 
So I would say as a conclusion, say nothing is free. That there is no free lunch. You have to pay some cost. But when you are deciding one of these methods, you have to make a balance between the effect of this method and the cost increase. Now, uh, there are two methods to, uh, to apply the uh, cross-top analysis. One way is to uh, conduct the analysis using mutual capacitance and mutual inductance. Usually at low frequencies like 100 megahertz or below, mutual capacitance is dominant. So in the frequency range of your digital system whose frequency is below 100 megahertz, you have to control the mutual capacitance to reduce the crosstalk. However, your system frequency, clock frequency is going over 100 um, megahertz or gigahertz range, uh, I think a mutual capacitance effect is emerging as important as mutual capacitance. You have to combine them together to, uh, on a, to apply the analysis of crosstalk. But however, I think over the gigabit uh, per second range interconnections, I would apply mode, mode analysis. This is the circuit theory, CM. RM is based on circuit theory, but um, mode theory is more likely a uh, microwave theory. And uh, it, I'm not going to spend a long time to talk about the circuit theory based cross talk because our class time is limited. Also, considering the very heavy data rate of uh, current interconnections, I believe mode analysis is more necessary at this moment. So I'm going to give lecture today based on mode analysis. Mode means a, a even mode and odd mode. I think we spend quite a amount of time to discuss about even and odd mode propagation, deflections, and generation in the differential line theory. So I'm going to bring that understanding to conduct the crosstalk analysis today. Uh, this is a special case when we have two lines, number one lines and number two lines. Generalization of uh, this crosstalk problem to be uh, 200 lines or more could be very straightforward. But in this class today, I'm going to look into these two line cases to discuss the physics related to crosstalk. Now I assume that we have two lines and source line is terminated with the resistance RO that is odd mode impedance or some, something. I, I assume that we have RO terminations. At the receiver side, we, I also assume that each line is terminated with uh, RO or ohms. And because this is a coupled transmission line, uh, it has ground plane underneath, and we have two lines on the top of that. And because of this coupled transmission line structure, we're gonna have odd mode impedance and even mode impedance. Uh, you remember that differential mode impedance is twice of uh, odd mode impedance, and common mode impedance is half of the even mode impedance. Also, you remember that even mode impedance is higher than single line characteristic impedance and uh, it is uh, larger than uh, even mode impedance. And this means that old mode impedance is larger than, uh, old, uh, even mode impedance is larger than old mode impedance that is creating the crosstalk. Uh, that is one, uh, at this moment, one important fact that I'd like to emphasize at this moment. When we have uh, two lines and the space, uh, space between the two lines is very close, we have space is very close, we have uh, all the mode impedance and even mode impedance will be splitted. And that will be a cause of crosstalk. That kind of analysis is being called as mo uh, mode-based uh, mode crosstalk analysis. 
In the case of microstream line, where we have air on, on the top of uh, transmission line, and also we have dielectric material between the uh, two metals and ground, because the electromagnetic wave speed of air and on dielectric is different. Uh, air velocity and uh, is the not same. So because so because of that, uh, propagation velocity of even mode and old mode will be different. That means uh, old mode impedance and even mode impedance will be different. And because of the field distribution, field distribution of old mode and old or even mode will be different. That is why we have. Uh, this is the second source of crosstalk. Once again, at this moment, I want to summarize that um, source of crosstalk is firstly uh, on the fact that uh, we do not have same impedance, even though the modern impedance difference. Second cause of the crosstalk is coming from the fact that uh, old mode and even mode uh, time delay will be uh, different. Now, second assumption uh, in this analysis is that one line, one line one, we have line two. In line one, we have a step uh, transition from logic level zero to high will be applied. While meanwhile, we're gonna have zero voltage at uh, second line two. Then in, at the end of this analysis, I'm going to measure the voltage which appears uh, near the driving side is called near end cross top. And later we're gonna see, observe the voltage wa waveform at the far end that is called a uh, far end cross top. And uh, in summary uh, and in conclusion, later we'll, I will uh, uh, prove that in the adjacent line, we're gonna see very uh, small size uh, cross top and it will have wide uh, length. Meanwhile, at the far end, far end, we're gonna see negative voltage drop. Uh, even though we have positive steppers here, we're gonna see negative voltage drop at the far end. And the length of this negative pulse will be determined by the difference of order mode uh, time delay and even mode time delay. So this is the environment to conduct mode-based crosstalk analysis. And when later, or when for the uh, case of numerical uh, calculations, I'm gonna assume that uh, this termination impedance is 50 ohm, characteristic single line characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. Uh, meanwhile, uh, order mode impedance is 45 ohm. Because of that differential mode impedance of couple transmission lines will be 90 ohm. And also I'm going to apply the assumption saying that even mode impedance is 55 ohm, while common mode impedance will be half of the even mode that it will be 27.5 ohm. And I'm, go I'm going to, because this is micro streamline interconnection, old mode velocity is higher than even mode velocity. Because of that, differential mode time delay will be shorter than a uh, common mode time delay. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the uh, analysis. Uh, and um, yeah, in the previous slide, I was assuming that we're gonna have voltage transition uh, from zero to uh, V. Meanwhile, at the adjacent line, we're gonna have quite the voltage level zero. And this will be decomposed this is very important uh, concept. We're gonna apply the mode decomposition. Uh, that means uh, we're gonna split this situation into di two different cases. First one is the differential mode and second one is common mode. In the differential mode, I'm assuming that in a line one, we are applying the half voltage step, while in line two, we're gonna have negative voltage step. However, in the common mode case in line one, I'm assuming that we are applying the half voltage step. In line two, we also applying the half voltage step. By adding this differential mode and common mode, 
addition of this half voltage one line one and half voltage line two will be the same as the, this uh, one volt step voltage applications. However, in line two, in differential mode, we're gonna generate half negative voltage step. And in common mode in line two, we're gonna apply the positive voltage step. This, this and this voltage will cancel each other. So that, that will be same as the original condition where we have zero voltage. So to apply the mode uh, decomposition, we split this uh, crosstalk problem with number one, differential mode excitation and common mode excitation. At the end of analysis, we're gonna add the result of one and two together. That's gonna be the result of the crosstalk. Uh, why can we apply this um, uh, mode decomposition method? Because we are assuming that this whole system is linear system. Our material and all the properties are linear and uh, our Maxwell equation is linear. If we have some non-linearity in this space of uh, uh, pro engineering problem, this may be inappropriate. So later on, from now on, I'm going to conduct a differential mode analysis and common mode analysis of two different cases. And at the end, uh, we're gonna uh, calculate the result and result of differential mode, and we're gonna obtain the result of crosstalk of common mode. And at the end, we're gonna add that together to finally obtain the uh, near end crosstalk and find the crosstalk. Junior, I, I can see your uh, screen on the, your, I can see your face on the screen. Thank you for uh, joining us today and attending the class and paying attention to us. Uh, would you shortly summarize this mode decomposition method for us? 그래서 이제 크로스톡에 분석하는 방법에 대해서 스킷 세어리로 분석하는 방법과 모드 애널리스트 방법이 있다 하셨는데 저희는 이제 높은 주파수에서의 분석을 하기 위해서 모드 애널리스트 크로스톡 애널리스트를 한다고 하셨고 이 크로스톡을 분석하기 위해서 디, 디퍼런셜 모드에서의 이제 결과와 그리고 커머 모드에서의 이제 사이테이션 했을 때 결과를 이용해서 이제 그 결과를 총 이제 두 결과를 이용해서 크로스톡 분석을 한다고 하셨습니다. 맞습니다, 맞습니다. 크로스톡 현상을 회로적으로도 표현할 수 있고 모드 해석으로 표현할 수 있는데 기가할수 이상이면 현상을 모드 해석으로 하는 게더 본질적으로 이해하는 데 좋고요. 어, 회로 해석을 막 엮어서 하는 방법도 이제 수업 시장 빠지도록 하고요. 자, 그래서 모드 해석이라는 게두 개가 있는 경우에 디퍼런셜 모드와 커먼 모드가 있으니까 각각으로 나눠서 해석하고 나중에 더 하겠다. 그렇게 되겠습니다. 그래서 이, 이, 여기서 페이지에서는 한 라인을 가만히 있고 옆에 라인에 스테퍼스가 팡 떴을 때 생기는 문제를 커먼 모드와 오드 문제, 문제로 소스를 나눈 단계가 되겠습니다. 그래서 아까도 얘기했지만 이 소, 어, 소스의 전압을 디퍼런셜과 커먼 모드로 나눴는데 이거 더하면 한 라인에 전압 가해지는 거하고 똑같게 되거든요. 자, 그렇게 진행하도록 하겠습니다. 또 다른 이유는 여러분들이 우리가 디퍼런셜 시그널링을 배울 때 어, 이분 모드와 커먼 모드에 조금 익숙하기 때문에 이런 방법을 어, 채용을 하도록 하겠습니다. Um, now, I would like to extend my discussions to uh, talk about uh, differential mode uh, ex excitation and propagation. I remember that we have, you are very uh, accustomed to this type of uh, differential mode uh, excitation and propagation. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, in the differential mode, we have applying half voltage step in line one and half minus half voltage step in line two. Then we're gonna have virtual ground plane between the virtual ground plane to line one, we're gonna have a uh, step pulse will be generated, excited, and that will be propagated at a speed of old mode impedance. 
This voltage step will be determined by the impedance ratio, ohmic impedance ratio uh, between the source impedance and all the mode impedance. Of course, between the virtual ground plane to another line, we're gonna have negative voltage uh, drop and it will propagate as a speed of all the mode. And you remember that uh, the, the voltage step of differential mode, in this case, differential mode voltage is from, defined from virtual ground plane to line one. Of course, source is the half voltage and impedance ratio will be determined by source impedance of output driver and all the mode impedance. For example, if we are assuming that source mode impedance is 50 ohm and all the mode impedance is 45 ohm, and differential mode impedance will be slightly smaller than uh, half voltage. In the single line case of source impedance 50 ohm and a transmission line 50 ohm, usually we're gonna generate half voltage. Um, but um, in this differential mode, actually a step pulse is half voltage, but by uh, the ohmic uh, divide between the source impedance and transmission line impedance, we're gonna have half will be added. But in this special case, if we have source impedance 50 ohm and old mode impedance 45 ohm, this will be slightly smaller than 0.5. So here again, in the time domain waveform, if we will look at that, uh, at the source side, source side, where it is source side, uh, we have a uh, uh, voltage step and VD that is gonna be same as this one. And this one, if this equation number one will determine the step pulse of differential mode. And of course, in line two and adjacent line, we're gonna have negative voltage. This will be a basically source of crosstalk. Please remember that originally in original problem, we are applying the uh, step pulse VB on line one. But interesting is it is gonna generate the differential mode because this situation has differential element as well as common mode element because unintentionally we are generating the differential mode because differential mode is uh, excited we're gonna have negative step pulse will be applied at the adjacent line. This is a really the a problem, beginning problem of crosstalk. This is actually coming from differential mode excitation. Even though we do not know what is common mode or differential mode, but when we have unbalanced excitation, and this is really unbalanced unbalanced excitation, it will, it will generate a differential mode and common mode together. First thing I would like to say is this differential mode is becoming source of crosstalk. This differential mode is a source of crosstalk because at the, because at the adjacent line, we're gonna generate negative voltage step and that amount of negative voltage step will be determined from this equation, old mode generate, old mode excitation equation. And this voltage, uh, differential mode voltage step will propagate along the line, let's assume this length L, L divided by old mode, uh, there will, might be some time delay, I would say TDD is equal to L divided by Old mode velocity after at time delay d we're gonna see positive uh, steppers and negative steppers at the adjacent line, and this negative pulse at the adjacent line could be a source of crosstalk as well as uh, at the receiver side. Crossmita crosstalk이라고 하는 현상이 unbalanced excitation인데. 따지고 보면 어, 오드 모드와 디프렌셜 모드를 동시에 빵 제너레이션 하는 겁니다. 마이크로 세어리로 보면 근데 그 오드 모드의 생산은 어, 어, 우리 트랜스미션 라인 티어리에서 배웠고요. 어, 그런데 그게 
옆 라인에 네거티브 펄스를 이렇게 만드는 거예요. 어쨌거나 디퍼런셜 모드 입장에서 보면 이게 빛의 속도로 가서 여기에 이제 도달하는 거죠. 어쨌거나 내 원하든 원하지 않든 네거티브 펄스가 옆 라인에 빵 생기는 현상. 이게 이제 크로스톡의 원인이 됩니다. 어, 캐페시티브 컵, 회로적으로 보면 캐페시티브 커플링으로 보면 이해가 안 되는데 마그네틱 커플링으로 보면 옆 라인의 역, 역전압을 발생을 시킵니다. 네, 그렇게 보면 디퍼런셜 모드가 약간 어, 인덕티브 커플링과 좀 유사하다 이렇게 볼 수가 있겠습니다. So anyway, I would like to uh, remind you that we have two lines and we are having single step actually uh, because of uh, mode decomposition we're gonna generate the differential mode at the adjacent line and that has negative voltage step that is very interesting part of the cross talk and that is becoming the source of the cross talk now it's time to continue our discussion to talk about common mode excitation and propagation in the common mode uh, analysis you remember that we are assuming that we are having um, a positive voltage step in line one and at the same time in common mode excitation we have same voltage pulse uh, actually there is half of them is applied to two line two and please rem, uh, remind yourself that in the case of a common mode both voltage same voltages that will be uh, imply, applied to uh, line one and line two and that amount of voltage step will be determined by this ohmic relationship equation first the source is half voltage and amount of common mode voltage step will be determined by the ratio of even mode impedance and source mode impedance. In a case where we have uh, even mode impedance 55 ohm and even mode impedance 55 ohm while source impedance is 50 ohm, then this is slightly larger than uh, 1 over 2.5. So that means common mode voltage excitation, this number is slightly larger than uh, differential mode. You remember that in the previous case, we have generated differential mode step, and that has, uh, we can obtain the equation using this uh, formula. And we, now we're gonna have same common mode generation that however, that is slightly larger than uh, differential mode voltage. That is because even mode impedance is larger than old mode impedance. Anyhow, in lines at the source and line one and line two, as source at at line uh, receiver side line one and line two, we're gonna see some voltage waveform. In a case of source line one and line two, we see that same voltage pulse will be generated, and then uh, the amplitude will be slightly larger than a uh, differential mode step. You remember that in the case of differential mode. Line one has the positive voltage step, but line one, line two has negative voltage step. And after time delay, after time delay, uh, we're gonna, uh, this uh, pulse, same common mode pulse will arrive at the receiver side at both line one and line two. But time delay will be uh, shown as common mode time delay. And that uh, you remember that in the differential mode, TD is more shorter than uh, common mode. So this common mode will arrive at the receiver side a little bit later than uh, differential mode. And same common mode voltage will be shown up at both line and line two. Now it's time to combine now we know the waveform of differential modes and now we know the common mode of, of voltage waveform at both transmitter side and receiver side 
Now it's time to add up both together. So now let's go back to the original um, problem uh, setup. And our target was to obtain the near end cross talk and find the cross talk. Near end cross talk is the voltage wave waveform at the source side at the adjacent line. And find the cross talk is the cross talk noise which appear at the receiver side at the adjacent line too. So our target at this moment is to obtain the find the cross talk and the near end cross talk and find the cross talk. In order to obtain the near end cross talk, in the previous slide, we calculated a uh, differential mode at the adjacent line. And we also obtained the common mode at the receiver side. And if we add them together, then it's becoming near end cross talk. If we add differential mode at the receiver side and common mode at the receiver side, that's gonna be far end cross talk. Also, of course, we can obtain the voltage waveform at the driver side of line one, also at the receiver side of line two. So what we wanna do is to obtain voltage waveform one, two, three, four. How can you do that? In the previous slides, we, we acquired um, voltage waveform at one, two, three, four. We just add them together. And uh, in the next page, we will see that the waveform at the near end cross talk will have flat waveform. And that, that height is gonna be determined by uh, common mode voltage uh, minus uh, differential mode. However, we in the find the cross term, we will find out that this depth will be determined by common or, or differential mode voltage level and length of this negative pulse will be determined by um, common mode delay time minus or differential mode delay time. And so interesting is find the cross term will have negative voltage waveform and the near end cross term has the positive voltage waveform, but the, so, in this sense, um, at the far end cross talk, we have very negative voltage drop and very sharp pulse. And so this is gonna be more uh, difficult to control. And that is uh, a summary of class. Now I would like to move on to next slide to talk about this. In the near end cross talk, uh, Uh, this is okay we have two lines and now we want to obtain the voltage waveform f1 here if we want to obtain the voltage waveform here we uh, have to add common mode and differential mode and you remember that a differential mode uh, excitation and line one has this waveform so uh, voltage and this ohmic ratio, ohmic uh, relationship. And this second term is corresponding to common mode, uh, uh, differential mode, this is a common mode. In the previous slide, it was calculating this uh, excitation of common mode and ex excitation of differential mode. And by adding those two waveforms, we can obtain this pulse waveform at the source side, number one, by adding these two equations. Putting those uh, numerical numbers, uh, I would say almost nearly uh, half voltage. Originally, what we wanted to was, uh, we are generating the voltage step on transmission line, actually by the dividing this voltage by source impedance and transmission line impedance, almost half voltage will be generated on a line. Uh, that is the, uh, the first uh, waveform and number one. And this is the case of number three. Please remember that we have, num uh, we have now position one, position two, and position three, and position four. four. 
Now we would like to uh, uh, calculate, uh, we would like to obtain the phi and the cross the waveform. Please remember that phi and the cross the here will be obtained by common mode voltage minus differential mode. Because here we ha are having differential mode, a uh, positive uh, voltage of differential mode will be appear in of V1. As I show on here, we have, a, uh, this is the first term is a differential mode term, and second term is common mode uh, term. Differential mode line one is positive and line at position three has negative. So that's why we're gonna have a negative term here. And second interesting point is, common mode voltage is the larger than differential mode and why is that because even mode impedance higher than uh, uh, old mode impedance and so we have smaller uh, voltage step here will be half voltage multiplied by 0.05 and it has gonna be a long uh, pulse so our conclusion of find the cross tongue is uh, like that if we have two lines, if we apply the step first, at the uh, near end cross talk, we're gonna have very long and small size near end cross talk will be measured at the adjacent line. That is the cross talk, near end cross talk. Uh, Junyoung, would you summarize shortly about a near end cross talk? Ah, yes, professor. 라인 두 개가 있을 때 이제 포지션을 이제 네 개로 나눠주셨고 조금만 크게 얘기해 줄래요? 아, 네. 목소리 크게 라인 이제 두 개가 두 개에서 이제 시그널링 할때 이제 포지션을 이제 일단 네 개로 나눠주셨고 이제 라인 하나에 이제 전압이 이제 전압 부위가 가해졌을 때 이제 포지션 원에서는 이제 디프러션 디퍼런셜 볼티지 이분의 그 볼티지와 이제 커먼 모드 그 커먼 모드의 볼티지를 이제 둘다 이제 양 양의 양의 전압을 이제 받기 때문에 이제 두 볼티지를 더하면 거의 가해진 전압에 가까운 볼티지가 이제 포지션 원에 나타나고 이제 포지션 3에서는 이제 디퍼런셜 볼티지가 막 마이너스 값을 가지기 때문에 네. 이제 리어엔드 크로스톡 현상이 발생한다 하셨습니다. 그러니까 이제 아주 간단하게 보면 라인 두 개가 있을 때 여기에 어, 트랜지션이 생각한 어, 생기면 옆 라인 바로 소스 쪽에는 같은 그 위사 같은 폴라리티를 갖는 작은 볼티지가 옆에 커플링이 되는 거예요. 그죠? 네. 여기는 이렇게 크게 뻥 생기는데 라인 원에는 그죠? 라인 3에는 조그만한 펄스가 이렇게 생긴다. 근데 이 높이를 뮤트럴 캐페시턴스로 뭐 이렇게 또 표현할 수도 있어요. 회로적으로, 극단적으로. 꼭 정확하지는 않지만. 그러니까 옆 라인에 뜨면 뮤트럴 캐페시턴스 때문에 이렇게 뜨는데, 어, 모드 티어리에서 보면 그 뜨는 게왜 생기느냐고 보면 옆 라인의 커먼 모드와 디퍼렌셜 모드가 같이 생기는데, 어, 디, 커먼 모드가 디퍼렌셜 모드가 조금 커서 커먼 모드는 양의 값을 갖고 디퍼런셜 모드는 음의 값을 갖으니까 요 차이만큼 요 차이만큼 여기 생기더라 이렇게 되겠습니다. Uh, at this moment, I'm gonna show you this one. I, I I'm not sure how I can go back and forth, but you see here <coughs> somebody measured the fine cross talk as you can see here. This is the fine cross talk. You see the flat voltage step appears at the adjacent line. And uh, this height of near end cross talk will be heavily depending on uh, difference between common mode and differential mode. And it is related to difference between even mode impedance minus old mode impedance. If the two lines are very close to each other, separation of uh, common mode and differential mode impedance will be even larger and larger. So here, in this case, the red line is a case of near-end crosstalk when two lines have very separate, large separation between even mode and old mode impedance. Uh, however, in the case of probably in uh, 
red uh, yellow line, uh, we're gonna see that uh, if we have enough space between the two lines, even an old mode separation may be small. So that's why we have a minimal find the crosstalk. Long, long time ago, I did the same measurement and steadily I was able to uh, to confirm this measurement. So please uh, uh, believe in. So also probably after the midterm uh, presentation, I'm gonna give you a homework too to obtain this kind of waveforms using the 3D EM simulation and circuit simulation. Um, so this is one of the verification that uh, I, I haven't done this measurement. I obtained this slide from internet and obviously this is one of the verification that uh, this mode analysis is correct. Now I want to switch to the, oh, okay. Uh, Junior, can you see this uh, slide again, the my notebook? Can you see number? Okay, now I'd like to move on to uh, this find the crosstalk. No, actually, uh, this is not the find the crosstalk. I was sleeping uh, when I prepared this slide. Let's talk about number two. Now, uh, uh, we have two lines and we are applying the single voltage step here. We want to obtain the voltage wave from N number one and number two, two and number three and number four. By now, I'm gonna obtain the voltage waveform at the receiver side. Please remember that old mode, uh, old mode propagation is faster. That means old mode will, differential mode will arrive first at time delay old mode. And this old mode voltage will have this kind of waveform. It's slightly sm uh, smaller than half voltage. And at time delay of even mode, actually this is a uh, common mode, then we're gonna, up this common mode and old mode will arrive. So it's gonna have some step waveform here. Even though we are sending single pulse of amplitude V at the receiver side, actually we're gonna have this step, step type of waveform. And first step is coming from uh, this uh, uh, differential mode. And second pulse is actually coming from common mode. And there will be some time delay. So it is actually uh, becoming a step. Um, so this is the summary of this page. So if you obtain uh, if you have coupled the transmission line, if you are applying the voltage step at the receiver side, you're gonna have some step pulse. Mm -hmm. Why do we do, do we see this kind of uh, situation? Mm -hmm. Because all the mode velocity and even mode velocity is different. Even mode and common mode arrive later than all the mode. That's why we're gonna have this kind of step waveform at the receiver side. Now let's talk about the highlight of our class far and the cross tone. You remember that if we have two lines, we are applying the half voltage step here, voltage waveform at the receiver side at adjacent line that is defined by far, far and the cross tone. This is the what it is. First, we're gonna have some time delay, uh, that is the delay of old mode, and old mode will arrive first. Old mode or a differential mode will arrive first. Because we are observing the waveform at the adjacent line, the polarity of differential mode is negative. So this kind of negative differential pulse will arrive at the receiver side first, and then after the time delay of uh, difference of the old mode and even mode, common mode will arrive. And this differential mode and common mode has to add together. So because common mode amplitude is slightly larger than the differential mode, we're gonna, 
this air voltage level will be slightly larger than uh, of zero. So basically what I'm saying is that why the cross top waveform is gonna have negative voltage step. And the pulse width will be the determined by the even mode and odd mode velocity difference. This is especially for the case of micro stream line, but in the case of stream line case, uh, electromagnetic fields are totally confined between dielectric, so over mode delay and even more delay will be the same. So we, we are not going to see that kind of situation there. But in most of the case, uh, a lot of cases, we're going to have micro streamline, then we have some difference between the old mode delay and even mode delay. And this amount of pulse is totally the differential mode of pulse. Jun Sang, uh, uh, Jun Young, can you uh, summarize this fine crosstalk? Uh, 네 교수님 find cross 같은 경우는 이제 포지션 4에서 나, 나타나는 현상인데 이제 디퍼런셜 모드와 아 이븐 모드와 오드 모드의 타임 딜레이 때문에 이제 니어 니어 엔드 크로스 톡에서는 이제 처음부터 합쳐지기 때문에 이두 볼티지가 이렇게 큰 차이가 안 나는데 여기서는 이제 타임 딜레이를 두고 합쳐지기 때문에 이제 디퍼런셜 모드가 먼저 이제 또 나타나서 굉장히 이제 크게 이제 전압이 저하되는 현상이 보이게 됩니다. 그렇습니다. 그렇습니다. 자, 생각해 보세요. 여러분들 두 라인이 있어요. 디지털에서 한 라인에 디지털 펄스를 이렇게 딱 줬어요. 트랜지션이 있는데 여기는 조그마한 노이즈 같은데 여기선 마이너스가 떠요. 이거를 설명하기가 되게 어렵거든요. 설명을 굳이 한다면 뮤츄럴 인덕턴스 때문에 모드 디어에서는 이건 디퍼런셜 모드와 커먼 모드의 크기 차이 도, 도착 속도 차이에서 생겨요. 예, 그래서 이게 제 과목에서 마이크로웨브 시어리와 회로 시어리를 왔다 갔다 해야 된다고 보고 있고요. 자 이렇게 되면 수신단에서 여기도 딴 시그널이 오고 갈거 아니에요. 여기서도 딴 시그널이 오고 가고 할때 여기에 이게 더해지는 거예요. 중첩되면. 그러면 똑바로 올라가야 되는데 이것 때문에 뭐 밑으로 올라갈 수도 있고 밑으로 갈 수도 있고 이렇게 막 다양한 현상을 만들어내요. 근데 어쨌거나 페로이로 해서 설명하기 어렵지만 네거티브 펄스가 생기니까 이투 라인에서는 데이터를 깨끗이 보내고 싶어도 옆 라인 크로스톡 때문에 막 지저분해지는 거예요. 그러면 볼티지 마진과 타밍 마진이 줄어들어서 굉장히 설계가 어려워지는 이런 면이 점점 생기고 특히 데이터 레이트가 극단적으로 높아지지 라인이 굉장히 가까워지지 그래서 크로스톡이 어, 우리 어, 굉장히 이제 중요한 어, 그 엔지니어링 요소가 되겠습니다. 이제 후반기 강의에 가면서 파워 노이즈와 그라운드 노이즈가 두개 아이 다름에 영향을 미치느냐 이런 면을 또 얘기하겠지만 그래서 이제 이 오늘은 크로스톡에 대해서 이렇게 얘기를 해봤습니다. Um, let's go to the okay. Um, in uh, please look at the tip first, and you say that is the find cross talk. And Junior, can you answer? For me, let's assume you have, if you, yeah, uh, if you want to reduce the find, 네, 말씀하세요. 그 인터넷이 지금 계속 지연 현상이 있어서 다 거의 다 들리지가 않았었습니다. 교수님 말씀. 아, 지금도 되게 지연 현상이 너무 심해서 잘 거의 안 들리고 있어서. 지금은 어때? 지금은 어때요? 어 지금 아, 괜찮아진 거. 요... 아 아니 네. 아닙니다. 지금도 지금도 좀 지연이 요... 너무 심해가지고. 예, 요 슬라이드 자체는 보여요? 네, 슬라이드는 보입니다. 네, 저도 이제 준영 얘기는 잘 들리는데 여기서 파, you we have find cross top major. So as I told you, we we gonna have negative pulse. So if 준영한테 물어볼게요. Find cross t o p 을 blue line에서 green line로 줄이고 싶으면 물리적으로 어떻게 디자인하면 될까요? 
블루 라인에서 그린 라인 말씀? 네. 어, 네. 그, 그러면 디프런셜 오드 인, 아, 오드, 뭐냐. 오드 모드 인, 인피던스를 이제 조절하거나 아니면 두개 사이에 딜레이를 아 이거 크기를 줄이면 그냥 네 오드 모드 임피던스 매칭을 잘 해야 될것 같습니다. 네 알겠습니다. 저도 요 측정하고 막 바로 저거 하기는 어려운데 하여튼 요 요거 니어엔드 크로스톡의 높이는 아 커먼 모드와 오드 모드의 차이인데 요거는 하여튼 오드 모드의 크기에 비례하고 선 폭이 라인의 길이와 속도에 비례합니다. 근데 이제 여기서 잘 나타나지는 않지만 라인의 저항이라든가 이런 요소 그런 것들이 좀 종합돼서 나타나는 느낌이 들고요. 어쨌거나 우리 강의하고 조금 일치하는 게 마이너스 펄스를 가지다가 다시 약간 위로 이렇게 튀어요. 그죠? 요거는 네. 아까 말한 것처럼 요 차이가 여기서 요 값은 커먼 모드와 오, 어, 디프렌셜 모드 차이가 아닌가 싶습니다. 우리 강의는 굉장히 단순하게 해서 요거를 요 측정된 거를 100% 어, 연관시키긴 어렵지만 전체적으로는 이렇게 올렸습니다. 이제 어, 우리가 이제 H B M 같은 경우 이 라인 사이가 아까 대한 것처럼 일반적으로 보면 이제 여기서 라인이 갈때 크로스톡이 많이 생기고요. 또 하나는 케이블링에서는 디프렌셜 페어 원과 디프렌셜 자요. 어, 오늘 그 했지만 그래서 이게 하나의 그 서버 컴퓨터 케이블링 이런 사례 하나 보여주고 있는데 데, 네트워크 장비들이 커. 장비인지 이런 케이블들이 어, 트위스트 와이어 테드요 이런 문제가 너무 너무 심각해 가지고 어, 그러니까 타이밍과 데이터 마진을 가지기 어렵고요 또 케이블링 할때 케이블 원과 또 옆에 있는 케이블 사이에도 또 크로스톡이 이렇게 생기고 케이블 내에서 블루 디프렌셜 페어와 어, 노란 페어 또뭐 회색 페어 블루 페어 이런 거다 이게 이제 크로스톡 요소가 되겠습니다. 그래, 여기 이제 find c r o s s t o c 뭐어 near end c r o s s t o c 다 문제가 되고 이런 걸 줄이려면 이런 쉴드 라인들이 계속 등장해야 되는데 이런 거다 어, 비용이 추가되고 이런 내용이 되겠습니다. 자, 이게 아마 통신 장비 같은데 어, 케이블링을 이제 프로세스 DSP와 DSP 사이에 이렇게 연결을 합니다. DSP와 DSP 사이일 수도 있고 CPU 보드와 아, GPU 보드일 수도 있고 스토리지 보드와 컴퓨터 보드 여기도 이제 또 이제 케이블링으로 하는데 이 케이블링 사이에 이제 니어 앤드 파인드 크로스톡이 있고 그 다음에 이 옆에 또 다른 컴퓨터 컴퓨터 사이에 통신 네트워크가 있게 되는데 그 사이에 또 이런 크로스톡이 이렇게 생기게 됩니다. 그래서 어 여러 가지 문제가 있는데 이제 케이블링을 할때 커먼 모드가 생겨서 EMI도 있지만 아, 이런 것들이 니어 앤드 파인드 크로스톡이 계속 중요한 문제가 되고요. 옛날에 제가 자동차 연구를 했었는데 자동차 이렇게 케이블링이 많습니다. 워낙 센서가 많이 들어가기 때문에 요즘은 이제 어, 네트워크도 들어가게 되는데 어, 여기 단면으로 보면 이렇게 케이블링이 번들로 다녀요. 센서 케이블, 전력 케이블, 그 다음에 디지털 케이블, 어, 디지털 앱, 그 다음에 통신 케이블 이런 것들이 다 이렇게 번들로 묶여가요. 왜냐면 번들로 안 하면 차, 차에서 공간을 많이 차지하니까 어, 그래서 이렇게 하면 이게 완전히 근데 자동차는 가격을 줄이기 위해서 쉴딩을 안 해요. 자동차 가격과의 싸움이기 때문에 자동차 케이블을 비싼 케이블 쓰면 무거워지니까 연비가 또 나빠져요. 그래서 쉴드 케이블 거의 안 씁니다. 그래서 여기 앉아 엄청난 크로스톡이 생기고요. 그다음에 자동차 안에 전력 배터리와 모터가 이렇게 또 연결되는 여기 이제 인버터라는 게 있겠는데 이게 또 스위칭을 하거든요. 이것들이 이 케이블에서 같이 돌아다녀요. 그래서 어, 크로스토 그다음 비행기 안에서는 여기 이제 레이더가 있고 여기 컴퓨터가 있으면 이거 사이에 또 공간적으로 전자파가 어, 발생하는데 그래서 요거는 이제 미국 군사 장비 회사들의 에, 그 스크린 캡처를 한 건데. 네, 크로스톡 문제가 
어, 오늘 강의에서는 니어 엔드 크로스도 파 엔드 크로스도 좀 좁혔지만 실질적으로는 엄청난 크로스도 어, 슬라이드가 지금 준영이 슬라이드 보이나요? 지금 그 원래 강의하시던 것만 보이고 새로운 건안 보이고 있습니다. 아 그래요? 지금 네네. 제가 하는 말안 들리고 있군요. 말은 들리는데 그 슬라이드가 새로 공부가 안된 거죠. 아 그렇습니까? 네네. 그러면 화면 공유를 끄고 지금은 슬라이드 끊어졌죠? 네 교수님. 지금은요? 지금 보입니다. 조금 전에 얘기한 거. 그, 아 그럼 아까 제가 이, 이 파형 설명한 거 하나도 네네. 없이 한 거예요? 네 교수님. 아 진작 얘기하지. 아 네, 이해를 오케이, 오케이. 좋습니다. 좋습니다. 네. 좋습니다. 한 10분 얘기하겠습니다. Um, this is the measurement result of uh, near end cross toe and fine end cross toe. Uh, you see that uh, this is the near end cross toe waveform. And you see that uh, we have very flat voltage level in the, in the positive direction. And please remember that uh, the height of this purse is uh, the difference between common mode and differential mode. And now we have red line and yellow line. In the case of red line, the near end cross t o e is higher than uh, yellow line because uh, old mode and common mode uh, difference voltage will be higher. And once again, this uh, this amplitude of near end cross tone is corresponding to the difference between common mode and differential mode. Usually common mode amplitude is slightly higher than uh, differential mode. That is why we, we have positive, negative, uh, positive uh, near end cross tone. However, as I explained in the class, we have a uh, fine cross talk that has negative pulse and the amplitude of this negative pulse is uh, determined by old mode voltage excitation at the adjacent line and the pulse width of this line will be, be uh, determined by the propagation delay difference between old mode and even mode. So uh, this measurement was obtained from the internet and long, long time ago, I did the same measurement and I did the I obtained the same measurement results. So um, even though we did very simplified analysis of even uh, near end cross talk and fine end cross talk, you can see that uh, we, we was able to measure it. And this is the one of the verification. Um, another uh, important part of uh, our cross talk consideration will be the cabling. We may have many differential pairs in a cable. Uh, and uh, even though our analysis today in the class was uh, uh, for the single end signaling case, the same principle can be applied to obtain the differential mode and old mode excitation at the adjacent to differential line. So we're gonna also see the near end cross talk and find the cross talk at the adjacent lines. That will be very crucial considerations when you are designing the uh, uh, system. Uh, this is the case I, uh, of the network uh, uh, system. You see that huge amount of uh, uh, cabling are bundled together to make an uh, interconnection. Of course, we have to think about impedance matching and high frequency losses. Uh, but cross talk is heavy considerations. In the user specifications of uh, DRAM memory channel or high speed channel, you have to you have very tight specification to meet the cross talk. And this is another case where we have many uh, differential pairs. Then we're gonna have differential uh, line cross talk between inside a cable or between the cables. Um, in, in a system, uh, we may have a uh, DSP processor at one and DSP processor at two. Uh, we have to use the differential pair. So, so we're gonna have near end cross talk and find the cross talk between the lines. In addition to that, we may have another cabling system 
And this cabling system may be for communication between uh, the memory uh, storage channel and other network equipment. This channel might be between the DSP board and DSP board. So the, there might be another crosstalk between the cabling. Uh, inside car, there is uh, many sensors and processors and uh, communication system. I took this picture a long, long time ago, and you can see that there are huge cabling in a, a system, in a cabling system. And in a car, it's, it's extremely difficult to apply the shielding technique because shielding itself will increase the cost of cabling, also weight of cabling. So also in a car, we have uh, automotive, uh, the digital communication system, as well as automotive uh, driving system in there, we have larger inverters and motors. So, and these uh, power cables and communication cables are bundled together to be a single uh, cabling wiring system. So it, it is causing a lot of crosstalk. Uh, inside, uh, uh, in, this is another example of airplane where we may have some um, antenna system in, in our place, and we may have some digital system in, in different locations of plane, then we're gonna have field coupling between two different systems. This will be a huge uh, considerations when you are designing the airplane system. So today, even though I was talking about the uh, specific uh, the crosstalk problem being called as near and then find the crosstalk. So my message was that crosstalk is very important. And when you are designing the connections, you have to consider near and then find the crosstalk very heavily. And in order to understand physics related to near and the crosstalk and find the crosstalk, you have to apply the circuit theory principles as well as electromagnetic field principles. That is difficult part of the crosstalk. 자 오늘 강의에서 near end crosstalk과 far end crosstalk 얘기를 했는데 여러분들의 진짜 디지털 시스템 설계라고 한다면 이 얘기를 귀에 따갑게 들으실 겁니다. 굉장히 스펙도 타이트하고요. 어 그래서 아마 평생 따라다닐 단어가 될 거다. 그게 이제 DRAM IO 서킷을 디자인하던 패키지를 디자인하던 PCB를 디자인 케이블링 시스템을 디자인하던 특히 비행 항공기나 자동차 같은 경우는 전력 시스템하고 디지털 시스템하고 RF 시스템 센서가 결합돼 있어요. 노이즈가 타면 센서 RF가 굉장히 민감하게 작용을 한다. 그래서 크로스톡이 되게 어려운 평생 따라야 그래서 밀리터리 자동차 문제도 큰데 오늘 그 강의는 우리 강의에서는 하지 않겠습니다. 자, 그래서 하이 스피드 디지털 인터커넥션으로 줄여 본다고 하면 왜이 문제가 심각하냐면 데이터 레이트가 높아지고요. 어, 그 다음에 라인들이 굉장히 가까이 붙어 있고 타이밍 볼티지 마진이 점점 줄어드니까 사소한 것도 어, 문제가 되는데 인터커넥션 랭스 어, 라인 개수가 줄어가면서 우리가 인공지능이든 메타버스든 계산하려면 병렬 처리를 해야 되다 보니까 굉장히 라인 개수가 늘어나는데 그러면 공간적으로 좁아질 수밖에 없어요. 그래서 우리가 어, 싱글 엔드 라인 처음 할때 임피던스 매치가 중요하다. 뭐 이렇게 리플렉션 없애야 된다고 했는데 그 리플렉션 없애려고 하고 또 디프렌셜로 갔어요. 디프렌셜로 가도 이 크로스톡은 영원히 없어지지 않는 거야. 그래서 궁극적으로 크로스톡과 EMI는 영원히 없어지지 않는 문제가 되는 겁니다. 근데 크로스톡의 소스가 여러 종류가 있는데 그라운드가 흔들려도 아이오에 영향을 미치는데 지금 우리가 얘기한 파인드 크로스톡과 니어 엔드 크로스톡은 바로 옆에 동료 때문에 시끄러워서 어, 생기는 문제고요. 조금 저주파에서는 뮤추럴 캐피시턴스만 이해해도 되는데 고주파로 가면 어, 기가할스에서 100기가할스 사이는 어, 모드 모드와 디퍼런시 모드 시어리로 이해를 해야 된다. 그래서 오늘 이렇게 얘기해 줬고 모드 시어리 입장에서 보면 우리가 전통적인 개념에서는 라인이 옆에 있으면 옆에 라인에 노이즈 같으면 옆에 라인하고 같은 방향으로 위상의 전압이 뜰것 같은데 아, 어, 모드 시어리로 보면 반대로 튀기도 하고 또 보면 임피던스 미스매칭도 임피던스가 달라지면 반대로 펄스가 튀기도 하죠. 에, 에, 그, 그런데 
아, 이렇게 또 다른 거는 이제 전화, 아, 속도의 차이에 의해서 이렇게 노이즈가 생기더라 이 말씀을 드리고 그래서 모두 마이크로앱 시어리를 좀 알아야 되는 거죠. 더 멀리 가면 자, 자동차든 비행기든 막 아, 커플링이 될때 그러니까 자동차나 비행기나 군사 장비는 RF 주파수를 많이 쓰거든요. 적을 탐지하는 데도 쓰고 통신하는 데도 쓰고 왜냐면 모바일하기 때문에 에, 거기서는 커플링이 조금 떨어져 있는 경우 가까이 이렇게 있는 경우는 모드 어넬리시스를 하지만 안테나는 좀 떨어져 있어요. 핸드폰에 LTE 안테나가 있고 뭐 와이파이 안테나가 있는데 떨어져 있고 뭐 그, 어, 블루투스 안테나도 있고 이럴 때는 또 3차원 필드 해석을 해야 되는 거예요. 아까 비행기처럼 예, 비행기처럼 그래갖고 결론으로 얘기하면 케이블링을 연결할 때 아, 두 가지 메저먼트 방법인데 아이 다이어그램을 시뮬레이션하고 어, 그게 이제 중간고사 끝나면 집중적으로 할 부분인데 아이 다이어그램으로 함으로써 볼테이지와 타이밍 마진을 확보하는 건데 그게 이제 또 다른 메저, 또 다른 시스템 스펙은 이게 라인이 길어지면 케이블링 같은 경우 아니, 주파수가 높아지면 로스가 생겨요. 스킨 이펙트 로스 때문에 그래서 신호가 줄어드는 게 있고 어 그리고 인터심블 인터페어런스라는 게 생겨서 또 데이터 레이트가 충분한 마진을 못 갖는 게 있고 또 하나가 크로스톡입니다. 크로스톡은 쉴딩을 하는 공간에 떨어지는 아무리 싱글 라인을 잘해서 아이 다이그램이 좋고 인저션 로스가 적다 하더라도 크로스톡을 또 해결해야 돼요. 그래서 시스템 설계 입장에서는 EMI 빼고 뭐 서멀 이런 것도 나중에 얘기하고 요 특정한 데이터 레이트에서 내가 인터커넥션 설계할 때 크로스톡을 어떻게 조절하느냐, 인저션 로스 어떻게 조절하느냐가 중요한 목표가 되겠습니다. 다음 시간에는 인저션 로스 얘기를 해보도록 하겠습니다. 인저션 로스를 또 줄이기 위해서는 여러 가지 방법이 있고 또 이퀄라이저 이런 얘기를 하도록 하고 그게 지나면 5월 중순부터는 파워 설계, 그 다음 6월에 가면 그라운드 설계 계속 이어가도록 하겠습니다. 오늘 여러분 경청해 주셔서 감사하고요. 어, 자, 이 사진을 보면서 우리 끝내도록 하겠습니다. 얼마나 아, 이 사진 보면서 얼마나 시스템이 지저분해지겠는가. 네. 케이블링도 지저분하지만 아, 크로스톡도 얼마나 많겠는가. 아까 이 자동차 케이블 사, 사진도 하나 보여줬는데 장난이 아니라는 거죠. 그죠? 케이블링 봤죠? 어, 케이블링을 고급화 하려면 실딩을 많이 쓰면 되는데 자동차 무게가 많이 나가서 연비가 줄어요. 그래서 또 이걸 광 케이블로 바꿀 수가 있어요. 근데 광 케이블의 단점은 뭐냐면 전기를 광으로 바꿔야 되기 때문에 또 거의 전력 소모가 많고 비싸요. 자동차는 쩐 단위 장사인데 어, 자동, 비행기는 제가 미국 갔다 지난주에 왔지만 자석에 다 TV가 있는데 다광 케이블 쓸것 같습니다. 비용의 문제가 있게 됩니다. 또 하나는 메인터넌스가 카파는 잘못되면 다시 연결하고 납땜하면 되는데 광 케이블을 통째로 모듈째로 바꿔야 되고 또 진동이 자동차 계속 진동이 있잖아요. 그런 게 어려운 점이 있습니다. 자 오늘 강의 여기서 마치고요. 굉장히 중요한 서브젝트인데 크로스톡을 요구 한번 강의로 끝난다는 게 마음의 부담은 있지만 또할 얘기가 많아서 여기까지 마치겠습니다. 여러분 수고하셨습니다. 감사합니다.